morning everyone today we are going to see operating system unit 2 section 2 in the previous topic we have begin with unit 2 that is process management and in the previous topic we have understood we have studied what are processes how processes are created created in operating system and how operating system manages these processes so whenever the processes are brought from secondary memory to main memory the processes are loaded into main memory it is divided into four sections and that uh, in this four section that processes holds all the information about that related particular process in the today's topic we'll understand how the process passes from different states see processes uh, will be in a uh, various states so whenever it moves from uh, secondary memory to main memory it has to pass from various states and those states we are going to uh, study today and how operating systems handles those various states we are going to study today so these are the various states of a process and this we call it as basic states of a process so as a process executes it changes states so you can also see the diagram of this state this is state 1 new state this is state 2 ready state this is state 3 running state this is state 4 waiting state and this is state 5 these are the basic states if you see this diagram again here two extra states have been added state 1 state 2 state 3 state 4 state 5 state 6 and state 7 so in this diagram these two are the extra states so first we'll understand the first state that is new state so if you see the definition of new state is the process is being created that means the process which is under creation so the process which are going to be created those will come under the new state so let us understand that see the programs are stored in the secondary memory like p1 this is the first program this is the second program so the various programs are stored in the secondary memory so whenever these programs are brought in the main memory for execution then it is loaded into the main memory now p1 is loaded in, into the main memory now this p1 is under process creation now it is under process creation so this p1 is in a new state now so whenever the processes are created and those are under new and those are under creation then such processes comes under new state so operating system picks the programs from secondary memory to main memory and those are under the process creation and those processes come under new state now we'll understand next state that is ready state so after process creation so these processes will now go to the ready state for execution so as we know that the processes will be brought from secondary memory to main memory for execution so when the processes are under creation those will be in a, a new state those will be in a new state and after the process creation these processes now they'll change its states to ready state now after process creation the processes will now change its state from new state to ready state so whenever a process is created it directly now enters in the ready state in which it waits for the cpu the processes which are ready for the execution and reside in the main memory are called ready state processes now suppose if i want to execute uh, process p1 p2 p3 so these all processes has to be loaded into the main memory from secondary memory to main memory so these all are waiting in the main memory for execution so as there is only one cpu so at a time only one process will be executed so whenever the processes uh, based on the various scheduling algorithms the processes will be selected from the ready queue for execution 
by the CPU. So we need to understand that uh, in a ready state, processes are waiting for the for waiting for the chance for execution. Now next state we'll see that is running state. Now already the processes are waiting in the uh, ready state in the main memory for the execution by the CPU. So the operating system selects the one of the processes from the ready state and uh, send it to the CPU for execution. So operating system selects the processes uh, based on the scheduling algorithms. So uh, later we'll understand what are these scheduling algorithms. So using the scheduling algorithm, operating system picks one of the processes from the ready state and send it to the CPU for execution. So uh, which are the process is executed by the CPU, that process is in the running state, that process is in the running state. So from the ready state, that process changes its state to running state. That means it is now currently being executed by the CPU. So there are schedulers, schedulers uh, whose uh, work is to pick the process from the ready state and send it to the running state and that will be done by the schedulers. So operating system uses the schedulers to pick up particular process and assign it to CPU. Any process can be picked up by CPU based on the uh, scheduling algorithms and will be sent to the CPU for execution from ready state to running state. Now let us see another state that is waiting state or block state. Now suppose already the process P1 is running and it is executed by the CPU. So CPU is currently executing process P1 so it is in a running state. Now in between that process P1 wants to use some resource uh, like input output resources like say printer. Now the process P1 wants to use the printer. So the process P1 will be moved to the waiting state. Now when the process P1 moves to the waiting state, the CPU becomes free. Now when the CPU is free for time being, the another process will be assigned to the CPU. Uh, which are waiting in the ready state. Now the process P2 can be selected by the CPU and it is going to execute now process P2 until the process P1 finishes its uh, using of uh, printer. Now the process which has already moved to the waiting state that is P1. Now when the process P1 comes to the waiting state, uh, if the printer is free, then the immediately the printer will be assigned to process P1. Now by chance if the printer is not free and it is used by some any other process, then the process P1 has to wait here until that printer becomes free. So this is how the process will be moved from running state to waiting state if they want to use some resources. Let us see now another state that is terminated state. Now suppose the process P1 is now running, it is executed by the CPU and it is in a running state and when it finishes its execution, it comes to the termination state. So after running state, when it execute, finishes fully execution, the processes will be moved automatically to the terminated state. Now next state we'll see that is ready suspended state. So ready suspended state is a place in the secondary memory. So the processes are going to wait in the secondary memory here, ready suspended state. Now some of the processes will be moved from ready state to ready suspended state. So there are some situations in which uh, the processes has to be moved from ready state to ready suspended state. As we all know that in ready state, the processes are going to wait for the chance for execution. So when the processes comes to the ready state, they want to use the resources immediately. So in these cases, if the resources are free, 
then the resources will be assigned to that process and uh, if the resources are not free then this process is uh, instead of waiting in the main memory those processes will be moved to the ready suspended state in that means in the secondary memory so as we all know that main memory is a limited memory so instead of wait make instead of to make them waiting in the main memory such processes uh, will be moved to the secondary memory uh, where they'll be waiting for their chance for execution and another situation is now whenever the process is comes to the ready state and ready state is almost full and it is not able to take the new processes because of that so the sum of the processes will be moved from ready state to ready suspended state so until the main memory becomes free so such processes will be waiting in the ready suspended state so whenever any resources are free which they want to use and if the main memory is also free then the processes which are waiting in the ready suspended again those will be resume back will be moved back to the ready state for execution in the main memory now we'll see the next uh, state that is blocked or suspended uh, as i told you some of the processes are in the running state that means these are executed by the cpu and in between they want to use some resources then if they want to use some resources those will be moved to the waiting state and in waiting state if the resources are not available then they have to keep waiting here and now suppose uh, already here there are already here there are lot of processes waiting for the resources and uh, so instead of making the processes to wait in the main memory those processes will be made to wait in the secondary memory that is blocked or suspended so whenever the resources are free then those processes will be suspended back to the main memory for execution so block suspended it is the space in the secondary memory where the processes will be waiting for time being uh, and whenever that particular resource is uh, available those will be again moved from secondary memory to main memory for execution so in a ready suspended case the processes will be uh, moved to ready state whereas in a block suspended case the processes will be moved to the blocked or waiting state so these are the various states which we have seen in the today's session that is new state ready state running state waiting state terminated state and uh, ready suspended state and blocked suspended state in the next uh, video we'll see some more examples on these uh, various states thank you